Greetings and welcome to worship with Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Saratoga, California. I'm Sarah Pearson, one of the pastors here. As we gather for virtual worship, you're invited to have either a printed out or a digital copy of our bulletin. You'll find it on, uh, in a very variety of places on our website uh, and in the chat section of this uh, YouTube video. As we begin on this third Sunday of Epiphany, we're going to begin with uh, maybe something a little unique to some of you. Uh, it's called a guided meditation. Guided meditations are um, opportunities for us as listeners uh, to still our hearts and our minds and to listen uh, to a story or, or a litany, and in this case, uh, scripture from 1 Corinthians. Uh, and guided meditations are meant to uh, help us hear things differently, help us to have some revelation or understanding that's different uh, about scripture or about an insight. One of the scriptures for today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, often called the body of Christ uh, scripture, hence why I'm standing uh, in front of our banner with all the hands. So to participate in this guided meditation, um, a couple different ways to do it. You can merely listen, if you're able to listen and focus, it is a good four minutes long. I also invite you, if a body part is mentioned, if something of the body is mentioned, that you uh, gently touch it. For example, if I talk about the ear, gently touch your ear. And it's a way for you to stay connected to the words, uh, not just mentally, but also physically. And so let us begin our guided meditation based on 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This uh, version is from The Message by Eugene Peterson. All gifts have a common origin, but all are handed out one by one by the Spirit of God. God decides who gets what and when. You can easily enough see how this kind of thing works by looking no further than your own body. Your body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells, but no matter how many parts you can name, you're still one body. It's exactly the same with Christ. By means of his one spirit, we all said goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. We each used to it independently call our own shots, but then we entered into a large and integrated life in which he has the first say in everything. This is what we proclaimed in word and action when we were baptized. Each of us is part of this resurrection body, refreshed and sustained at one fountain, his spirit, where we all come to drink. The old labels that were used, labels like Jew or Greek, slave or, or free, are no longer useful. We need something larger, more comprehensive, and I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. A body isn't just a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If foot said, I'm not elegant like hand, embellished with rings, I guess I don't belong to the body. Would that make it so? If ear said, I'm not beautiful like I, transparent and expressive. I don't deserve a place on the head. Would you want to remove it from the body? If the body was all eye, how could it hear? If all ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where God wanted it. But I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are a part of. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body, but a monster. What we have is one body with many parts, each its proper size and in its proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine eye telling hand, get lost, I don't need you? Or head telling foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out. As a matter of fact, 
In practice, it works the other way. The lower part, the more basic and therefore necessary. You can live without an eye, for instance, but not without a stomach. When it's a part of your own body you are concerned with, it makes no difference whether that part is visible or clothed, higher or lower. You give it dignity and honor just as it is without comparisons. If anything, you have more concern for the lower parts of your body. If you had to choose, for example, wouldn't you prefer a good digestion to a full head of hair? The way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. Every part dependent on every other part. The parts we mention and the parts we don't. The parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into the exuberance. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. You must never forget this. Only as you accept your part of that body does your part mean anything. You're familiar with some of the parts that God has formed in the church, which is God's body. Apostles and prophets, teachers, miracle workers, healers, helpers, and organizers, and those who pray in tongues. But it's obvious by now, isn't it, that Christ's church is a complete body and not a gigantic, undimensional part. It's not all apostles, not all prophets, not all miracle workers, not all healer, not all prayers and tongues. And yet sometimes we keep competing for so-called important parts. Thus ends our guided meditation. I hope it was a powerful experience for you, meditating on how we are all connected in the body of Christ, and we all need one another. Amen? Amen. We continue our worship with our prayer of the day. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Blessed God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that, comforted by your promises and empowered by your laws, we may help fulfill your justice this day and always. Amen. Today's Gospel reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 4 verses 14 to 21. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Here ends the word of the Lord. Good morning, friends. My name is Drew, and I'm the director of youth and service here at Prince of Peace. Now, to morning, I'm coming to you from our youth room, and I'm trying to put together a jigsaw puzzle. It's a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, so it's really tough. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. I know a lot of people did these in the year 2020. It was one of my favorite activities to do with my sister when I was a kid. A lot of times during the summer, we would have these epic uh, jigsaw puzzle competitions that would go on for weeks on end. And as I was putting this puzzle together today, it reminded me of our Bible lesson. So in the story today, we hear about how 
God's spirit is kind of like a body and how a body is made up of all different types of members. So we have our hands and, and we have our, our arms and our legs and our feet. We have our ears and our nose and our eyes and our mouth. And all of these different pieces of our body do different things for us. Our hands allow us to pick things up. Our feet allow us to walk. Our ears allow us to hear the beautiful sounds in nature. Our eyes allow us to see the beauty of creation. And, and our nose gives us the ability to smell all the good and sometimes bad things that there are to smell in this world. And the cool thing is that our body's able to work together so that we can experience the blessing that it is to be alive and the blessing of this earth that God has provided us with. And it's really important that we have these different members because if I try to see through my nose or if I try to hear through my eyes, I don't think that would work very well. Do you? God must have been pretty smart when putting all these different parts together to form this one body. And the reason that that reminds me of this jigsaw puzzle is because oftentimes I think that we are kind of like these jigsaw puzzle pieces. We are super cool and we are unique. There's not really anything else like us. Uh, we might, you know, resemble some other jigsaw pieces. We might have similar colors. Maybe we have a similar edge, but really for the most part, we are an individual, totally unique creation of God. And I think that we can be kind of weird and funky. We can do little dances uh, and we can just be a little bit awkward sometimes. But when you put all these pieces together, when you put all of us together, like in a community, like Prince of Peace, where people stick together, this was a bad example, these two don't fit, but when they stick together, we are able to form communities where God is felt, where people are loved and supported, and where we are able to put all of our gifts that God has blessed us with, to make a picture that looks like this or something even more beautiful than we could ever imagine on our own. And I think this is such a cool idea as we continue to think about how we grow God's love, how we grow our own love in the love that we have for our community, both inside and outside of Prince of Peace that we want as many different jigsaw pieces in this puzzle as possible, because the more pieces we have, the more beautiful picture we will ultimately become. And with that, I would love it if you would join me in a word of prayer. So please repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for jigsaw puzzles. Thank you for making us unique. Help us fit together and become a beautiful community. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your January. Stay warm. Stay safe. I will see you next week right here. Same time, same place. Have a great week. Bye. As we begin our sermon today, I want to teach you about a game that I've been playing for about 13 years. Uh, it was introduced to me by a friend from seminary named Emily. And uh, it's not a game she made up. It's a game that's been around for a while. I don't know the origins of it. And this is how you play. It's quite simple. If you think of the game, then you have lost. Again, the only way to lose the game is to actually think about the game. So in order to win, don't think about it at all. And now that you know about the game, you're playing it. So all of you who are listening to this sermon, you know about the game, and so you're playing it. And if you're one of those lucky people that doesn't always remember things that they hear, you'll never think of it again, and then you'll always have lived winning the game. But the moment you think about the game, you lose and the game starts over. Now, it's, it's appropriate and quite normal that when you do uh, lose the game, 
you let others who are playing the game that you know about know that you have lost the game. So in the, the, the preaching of this sermon right now, and as I'm listening to it what, with all of you, um, I'm going to text my friend Nick and Emily and say, hey, I just lost the game. And then therefore, obviously, when I text them, they will lose the game because they'll have thought about it just by me reminding them of the game. I've seen posts about the game on social media. I've seen it written on a, a dirty windshield with a finger. I just lost the game. You can call it silly. It's, it's, call it a pointless game. Uh, but for all of you who love people and love competition, it's, it's, a, it, it's a hilarious reminder of the people in my life who are scattered all, all over the country who are and who have been playing the game. It's certainly not as universal of a game as tag, but it's well known enough. And the more you talk about it, obviously, the more people play it. So it makes it more fun. And it's very inclusive, easy to play. Now, did you know that the game was even played by Jesus? I'm serious. It's in our scripture for today. I invite you to pull out your Bibles or your bulletin if you have that with you, because these verses from the Gospel of Luke are well worth a closer read. We're in the fourth chapter of Luke, which means that we are kind of at the beginning of Jesus's ministry. Uh, it says in the beginning of our reading for today that he, he returned filled with the Holy Spirit. And what Jesus is returning from is his 40 days in the wilderness where he was fasting, uh, being tempted by the adversary. And he emerged from that time with a newfound uh, understanding and assurance of his call and identity. And he goes to the synagogue as is his uh, part of his religious um, upbringing. And because he's, he's a male, an adult male, uh, he uh, reads a scroll. He asks for the scroll from the book of Isaiah. And he finds the, the, the reading that we, we are looking at today. I think it's the 61st chapter of Isaiah. That's one of the prophetic books of the Hebrew Bible. Uh, a, a beautiful and long book about how the world is in God's hands and about how God is, is always seeking to call God's people back to right relationship, just and compassionate relationships with one another and with God. And this particular section that Jesus is reading is, is a powerful bit of poetry. I'll read it for you again. It's also uh, in your bulletin printed. Jesus says, quoting Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring good news to the poor, release to all who are captive, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, each of those five phrases, we could preach an entire sermon on. What does it mean to bring good news to the poor? What does it mean to let the oppressed go free? But the only one I, I think that we need to fully explain a little better that we have time for today is, is the fifth one, when Jesus references the idea of, of the year of the Lord's favor. That's a reference to the uh, Hebrew notion of jubilee. Uh, it's this radical notion that every 50 years, um, all debts are forgiven, um, all who are slaves or indentured servants uh, are, are set free to return to their homes. Um, and uh, you're supposed to forgive, kind of like a, clear, a clean slate for everyone. It's great news if you uh, are weighed down by debt or if you're stuck in jail. Uh, not so great news, obviously, if you're wealthy and you have amassed a lot of wealth and land or you are owed a lot of money. Jesus says, I am here to make these things happen. Good news to the poor, release to the captives, sight to the blind, oppressed go free, and proclaim that this is the year of the Lord's favor. And after he finishes reading this this these verses from Isaiah, he puts the scroll down and he sits down, which is the posture for preaching in Jesus' day. And everyone is watching him. And he says very simply, 
Today, these words have been fulfilled in your hearing. Today, these words have been fulfilled in your hearing. So Jesus is saying, this is the beginning of my ministry. I'm declaring to you this, this is what I'm about. And, and it's a, a curious turn of phrase. Today, these words have been fulfilled in your hearing. And he's saying, those verses are happening and continue to happen. And all of you are a part of it, he says to the listeners. Uh, people's response in the verses following the, the chunk that we read today is, is amazement. Wow. And I think where it connects to the game, the reality that Jesus has been playing the game, is that you all just heard these phrases as well. Those five things that Jesus says that he's all about, he says, you're a part of it. By hearing it, you are part of it. So friends, you, me, all of everyone who hears these words uh, are, are called and brought into the idea of bringing good news to the poor, release to the captives, sight to the blind, the oppressed to go free, and proclaiming that this is the year of the Lord's favor. You're in the game. Right along with Jesus. This is our this is our game, this is our call, our task, our challenge. And this is how the word of God has always worked, really. Right? Jesus is quoting from the prophets, from God's word. And the beginning of, of what we call our Bible, right? The book of Genesis. How does God make creation? By speaking. The earth is, 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 is a void with chaos, and God speaks, let there be light. Let there be land, let there be whales and fishes and butterflies, and let there be humans. God's word has the power to transform and create, to generate. And Jesus is saying that he is a part of that, and everyone who hears God's word is a part of that as well. See, there's a reason that we dig into the Holy Scriptures together. Because when Scripture and God's Word are used correctly, it does all these things for our life and for our world. It creates and liberates and proclaims freedom for everyone. And side note, I challenge you to find any Scripture in the Bible that doesn't do one of those things. And if anyone has ever used the word of God to oppress you, exclude you, or make you feel like anything less than a beloved and valued human, then they are misusing scripture. It happens all the time. If there are bits of, of God's word that you don't understand, that you are angry at, that you wrestle with, come talk to Pastor Nate or I. We are happy to dig into those words with you, into the historical context, which the God's word is embedded in, into the social context. To understand how God's word, again, is liberative. It's about freedom. Commercial over, but a commercial that I feel like I need to say in these times of abuse and misuse of God's word. Jesus says, today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. It is fulfilled because you heard it. Now, you may be thinking, and I think this too about these words, if this is true, if this is fulfilled today in my hearing, and if indeed this is the year of the Lord's favor, I, I really have a hard time believing that 2022 is the year of the Lord's favor. These past two years, and indeed so much of human history, are actually nothing like what Jesus is proclaiming. Here in the United States, we're, we're not a liber, liberated people. We're actually incredibly over-incarcerated. We are incredibly blinded by our, our fears and our homophobia and our racism and our, our anti-Semitism and so many things. 
we don't have clear sight, clear vision of the value of each human, do we? And as much as I want all debts to be forgiven, I don't see that happening anytime soon when we're, we're so tied into financial systems that are skewed toward the powerful and the wealthy. And capitalism is so rampant that it is killing our environment and deeply affecting the world around us, perhaps to the imminent detriment of our very survival as humans. And if you tell me that today, today, these scriptures are fulfilled in our hearing, I say, but so many of us are bogged down by the immense loss of life and in loss of relationships, the uncertainty of illness, awaiting diagnoses. And watching so many things that we love come to an end. Access to things that bring us joy. And so this talk of good news today, the end of oppression and sight and freedom for all seems kind of impossible. I don't get how we can even begin to turn this world around. If I'm honest with myself... And I know I've heard some of us talk about this together. I've heard some of you talk about this. I spent the past two years of my life living as if I'm on hold, right? Telling myself that the way we are living now, it's not real life. Real life will come after the pandemic when we don't have to wear masks anymore or, or be concerned about the number of people who are indoors together breathing and singing or real life will return when we can get a handle on, on on climate change or, or any of the realities swirling around us because of this pandemic. But again, God's word and the promise of God's word keeps swirling back up. God's liberating, transformative, joyful word is still acting, even in the midst of all that we are enduring right now. It was back then when Jesus' people faced living conditions and oppressions worse than what we're enduring. Because every time there is an act of liberation and love and compassion and, and restoring sight, then God's word is made real and tangible. Everyone who is taking part in this kind of work is acting on the word of God. So if I return again to the metaphor of the game, to play the game, all that you have to do is what? Remember and trust that it's being played. Take part. Again, it's really not about losing. I just lost the game. It's actually not about losing at all. It's about remembering that there are people all around us at all times that are a part of this good work with us. I'm slipping back into the, the metaphor of, of God's word again. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Today, because you heard the good news that God's liberating, freeing word is still at work, that it is true. And even though we may live in and an ambivalence about today, even though life has felt like it's been on hold. Remember, it's still moving too. It's still happening. Sometimes it takes us having our eyes restored by these words of Jesus, trusting that, that God's word is swirling all around us, still doing good. Kind of depends on where we want to look. And at any time, God is calling us, pulling us, inspiring us to take part in that liberation and that creative power of God's word. So friends, let's play the game. Let's stop thinking that our lives are on hold. Step out in whatever safe way we can and play the game. Amen. Amen.
one of the many ways, friends, that we play the game is, is through singing powerful songs about uh, God's justice and compassion for the world. So I invite you to sing uh, with Juanita our song for the day. Let streams of living justice. Juanita and Michael. And now I'd like to invite us into a time of prayer. Your response for today's prayers to the phrase, God of grace, will be, hear our prayer. As we pray today, you're invited into whatever prayer position is meaningful to you. If texting and being on your phone and being a part of the, uh, the prayer stream on, on the YouTube channel is uh, meaningful to you, then please do it. Uh, if you'd rather bow your head, uh, or, or stare out the window as you pray, do as you will. Let us pray. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You reveal yourself to us in the reading of Scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your church, Send us out to bring your liberating good news to all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. All creation proclaims your handiwork. Teach us to love the intricate and beautiful bodies that you have created. Bless tiny insects, enormous whales, and every creature in between. Sustain species at risk of extinction. God of grace, hear our prayer. You desire that there be no dissension among us, where we are divided in our society, nation, or world. 
come quickly to reunite us into one body, ease conflict, dispel violence, and bring an end to war. God of grace, hear our prayer. Anoint with your spirit all who are in need. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, people living with disability, people living in pain, and people living in oppression or religious persecution. We pray especially for our Jewish siblings today. God of grace, hear our prayer. Build up your body of Christ in this place. Here at Prince of Peace, we ask you to bless the variety of ministries in this congregation, especially those ministries we name aloud now. Empower us all to freely welcome and deeply value each person who enters into worship or who enters onto our site and property. God of grace, hear our prayer. And so since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these prayers and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. It is time for Holy Communion, a reminder that Holy Communion is open for everyone in this congregation, everyone who uh, is watching this video, because we believe that Christ is the host uh, at our table and at our meal, and Christ promises to show up for us. Not because of anything we do or the right things we say or exactly how perfect our bread or wine or grape juice or graham crackers are, but because Christ promises to show up. So you can pause the video, grab your communion items, especially encourage if you have little ones, allow them to pick the communion elements from your kitchen or refrigerator today. And so we begin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for everyone to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so gathered into one in our various homes and places in a mystical, powerful way, we pray together using the words that Jesus taught us saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, let us join in at our various tables into one table. And I say to you, the body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Let us all receive communion. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace, especially in the living of these days. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer printed in your bulletin. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
as we pre prepare to close worship and send you off with a blessing, a few announcements uh, for the good of the community. We have lots of announcements dated for the week of January 23rd, 2022. We are still doing Zoom only worship. Uh, please know that we are keeping a close eye on the numbers and making an informed and scientific decision about what's best for the health of not only our membership at Prince of Peace, but our wider community. Uh, we will make the call the Tuesday preceding worship, whether we get to go back in person yet. We are hopeful that it is very soon. In the meantime, lots of uh, opportunities to come on campus and be around folks masked and outdoors. Our Wednesday work crew gathers every Wednesday morning to do light work tasks around campus, and we have coffee at 10 a.m. So join us, even if you don't want to work or can't work. We love the company. Our rotating safe car park is on campus. Great shift opportunities Mondays, or excuse me, uh, mornings and evenings. If you've never worked a shift, you're paired with a volunteer who knows how to do it. A wonderful way to uh, bring good news uh, and share comfort uh, with those who are in need. Our food ministry continues as well. And as far as our connections and our care for one another as a Prince of Peace community, our annual meeting is coming up on February 6th. That's the important business meeting where we gather and we pass a budget for the year. We uh, get to see the annual report, uh, a great summation of the stories of the past year of, of our ministry and our life together as a community. So join us for that. It will most certainly be on Zoom, uh, February 6th, following worship around 11.15 a.m. And finally, uh, Saturday, the 29th of January, we have our next Adopt a Highway uh, that's a fantastic program we've been involved in for four years that Ken Pyle has been, has been leading uh, where we pick up garbage along Highway 85 and do a little bit of environmental justice work. So if you have questions or want to be involved, you can reach out to Drew or to Ken. This concludes the announcements uh, for the week. Of course, as always, if you want to know about what's going on, we have our e-notes. You can email Anne. If you're not getting that weekly e-blast that talks about all the ways that you can be cared for and fed in these difficult days of isolation. And so receive the blessing. God who calls you, claims you, and gifted you, be with you as you bring the good news of today's worship service to everyone who needs to hear it, especially the downtrodden, the afraid, and the poor. Amen. And so I say to you, friends, go in peace. Live into the love of Christ. Thanks be to God, we will. Gratitude to Michael Tucci for our postlude for today. Let us conclude our worship service. <laughs>